Number one says that there are four sets of triangles that have been transformed by a different transformation. Which one is not a rigid transformation? So remember that um, a rigid transformation means that they stay the same size. So the figures would need to stay the same size. So we're looking for ones that change sizes. And in this case, that is D. Number two, what is the definition of congruence? And so remember that um, congruence means that there is a sequence of rigid transformations that will take one figure on to the next. So this is kind of a basic um, definition that it's the same. Well, this isn't a definition, but same shape, same size. Um, All right, so number two says, what is the definition of congruence? And so remember that um, congruent means that something has the same shape and the same size. So um, A says that two figures have the same shape, then they're congruent. That's not true. They would need the same shape and the same size. B, if two figures have the same area, then they're congruent. Um, that's false. So Certainly not the definition of congruence, but also just let me show you an example. So if we had a square where every side was four, the area of this would be four times four or 16. We could also have a rectangle that had a height of two and a length of eight and two times eight would be 16 as well. So those are certainly not the same shape and the same size, even though they have the same area. Um, see if there's a sequence of transformations that takes one figure to another, then they are congruent. This is close to our definition that we learned. Um, it's just missing an important word here. So not just transformations, um, but it needs to be rigid transformations. And the rigid transformations are the rotations, the reflections, and the translations that we've learned. And they've added that in in part D. So D is the definition of congruence. Number three, there is a sequence of rigid transformations that takes A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. The same sequence is going to take D to D prime. So draw and label where D prime would be. So first of all, let's look at where D is. So D is right here. And so it looks like it's about midway between B and C. <clears throat> so D prime is also going to be about midway between um, B prime and C prime. So you can just kind of sketch where you um, think that will be, and then this is going to be your D prime, but definitely on segment BC, about in the middle. Number four, um, three schools are located at points A, B, and C. The school district wants to locate a new stadium at the location that will be roughly the same distance from all three schools. Where should the stadium be built? explain or show your reasoning. So we've figured out um, that when we do the perpendicular bisector of a segment, that's the segment that's equidistant from two points. So if we were to, you know, pretend that there's a segment here, we could use our compass and our straight edge, and I'm just going to use a circle drawing tool to construct the perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to draw a circle that goes um, around A through C and around C through A. This is going to give me um, a perpendicular bisector here or the set of all points that's equidistant from both A and C at the same time. So now if I were to do that again by doing the perpendicular bisector of BC, then where those two perpendicular bisectors meet are going to be equidistant from A and C and also B and C, so therefore all of them. So let's, we've already got this, uh, so let's do a circle around C to B and then B to C. Then we need to connect those with another segment here. 
So is this intersection to this intersection? So this point right here, where these two perpendicular bisectors meet, this point is on this perpendicular bisector, so it's equidistant from A and C. This point is also on the perpendicular bisector of BC, so it's equidistant from B and C. So therefore it's equidistant from all vertices. So that would be the spot um, where they should build the stadium. Number five, to construct a line passing through point C that is parallel to line AB. So it needs to be through C parallel to AB. Han construct a perpendicular bisector of AB, then he drew line CD. So does this guarantee that um, line CD is parallel to AB? And that would be false. Um, so we could, you know, they, he did a perpendicular bisector here where he just drew two congruent circles. Let me do one that actually goes from A to B and then from B to A. And then we could look at, so this, this intersection is just kind of where he decided to draw point D. So if I just drew point D here, and then I connected um, C to D, that's certainly not parallel to AB because D is way up here. So D is just some arbitrary point where these two circles intersected. It happened to look um, fairly close in his drawing, um, but definitely doesn't guarantee it in every drawing. So if you just kind of did another one here um, where that intersection is clearly not parallel, that should explain how you know. And then number six, this diagram um, is created with a compass and a straight edge where we have a line perpendicular to AB passing through point C. Okay, so we had started with line AB drew a perpendicular line through C, select all statements that must be true. So AD is equal to BD. So let's look at that. So here's AD. Is that going to be equal to BD? And that's false because B isn't on the edge of that circle. Um, so definitely not both radii. Is EC congruent to AD, and there's nothing saying that that's um, a radius, uh, the same size as the radius, so that's going to be false. Is AC congruent to DC? And that would be um, true because this is the perpendicular bisector, so C would be the midpoint, so AC and CD would be the same length. Is EA congruent to ED? And that would be true because D is the center of this circle. So ED is a radius and A is the center of this circle and AE is the radius. Those are the same size. So this is true. is ED um, equal to DB, and B is not on the edge of the circle, so DB is not a radius, so this one um, would be false. And then is CB equal to AD? Um, so is CB, sorry, CB, so right here, equal to AD, and no, um, there's nothing that tells us that those have the same length.